And welcome, everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Aurelia Talia. Okay, so this deck is going to be kind of similar to Aurelia Zir, but much cooler, right? Because we're going to be playing Talia. That's right. It's meme tier Monday where we play decks that are going to be pretty fun. Maybe not necessarily the best that, that we can have. You know, we're not playing Azir, um, but we're going to be playing some really fun stuff today. Uh, so this one's probably, you know, maybe going to be like the most competitive of them or, you know, at least it, it looks like a you know, real competitive deck with Aurelia. But we're going to be kind of switching up the top end. We're going to be having Sandswept Tombs in here, three of these, um, to be able to put 5-2 Ephemerals each time we Blade Dance. You know, like, 5-2 Ephemerals are no joke, right? You can't, you can't just, you know, just take 5 damage a bunch. So they're going to have to, like, throw blockers in front of the 5-2 Ephemerals. And then and combining that with Talia, where Talia can uh, copy Sandswept Tombs, so we can get multiple Sandswept Tombs uh, fairly easily in play, and then we blade dance, and then we're getting like a bunch of five twos coming in play attacking. Could be pretty sweet. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We'll have Voice of the Risen uh, to kind of fill our four mana slot now that Blossoming Blade costs five and um, Inspiring Marshall costs six. So we'll have a couple of Voice of the Risens. Not super easy to level up either of our champions, right? Like a zero super, super easy to level up. But if we're doing well, doing a lot of attacking, Aurelia really will level up. And then Talia, we need five landmarks. We got a couple of Unraveled Earth. That will, you know, almost, you know, that's 40% for Talia. And then if you have a, you know, landmark in play and then copy of Talia, you know, that's a good amount also. So we have Voice of the Risen. Besides the Sandswept Tomb, of course, we're going to have the Emperor's Dies and, you know, like the Dias. And this is another good card to copy um, with Talia and get a couple of these in play. But then besides that, we'll have our Ionia start, you know, Sparring Student, Green Glade Duo. These cards love when you attack with a, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and then we'll have Dancing Droplet is, is a good elusive attacker for, like, if we have the Sandswept Tombs in play. But, like, we don't really want to attack with, you know, something else. We can attack with the 1-1 one, one elusive and get, like, some 5-2s coming along with it. And then, of course, with Droplet, we'll have Lead and Follow, Retreat. Now, these cards will be able to give us card advantage, be where we can we can block return back to our hand with like retreat and lead and follow and stuff and, and all that kind of all that kind of stuff a couple of homecomings as well so uh let's go ahead and try it out let's let's see how we can do with some sand swept tombs with aurelia talia we're just gonna be playing in normal with it being meme tier day and we'll go play five games okay lissandra with leona I haven't seen this combination. So Droplet, Green Glade Duo, good. Sandswept Tomb, good. Um, even Unraveled Earth, not the worst. I mean, I could just see kind of keeping this. Yeah, I could just see keeping this. We could also send back the Unraveled Earth. I'll just keep it. Yeah, I want to. I want to try out like some, you know, like these new cards here for this archetype. I guess we do kind of have to be worried about um, Ice Shard and Avalanche and all those kind of cards. They got their blockers here, but I got my elusives. Blossoming mean blade. Shining gifts from the sky. Ah, oh, I really wanted to retreat return. Right, so you could block this and then and retreat return or or you know like the lead and follow, like either of those. Um okay. Channel our power. I don't know what to take nine. Every blade, every beat in its place. So I would love to play Sandswept Tomb, but I guess... But then I can't really do anything else. I guess we just kind of do this kind of stuff instead. 
Maybe I've like sand swept tomb on there. Morning, um, take you. Uh, on their attack turn. Oh, you think my my opponent's playing Grandfather Rumel? I could see that. All right, so if we attack, okay, we don't get Blade Surge if we attack. I can't figure out when you get Blade. The Blade Surge thing's weird. So no Blade Surge. Because I want to, I kind of want to keep Homecoming available. Right? Like I'm, I'm worried about tricks and stuff. Plus, like saving these Blade Dance cards for after Sandswept Tomb seems pretty good. Okay, so we don't get it because it's triggering off this this Emperor's Dias that's on the bench that puts it in after like we attack with the other thing, so we don't get it. All right, good to know. It gives us strength and guides our hands. Whoa, that card's gonna be cool. <laughs> I'm just so used to the I being bugged that I don't trust it anymore. <laughs> that's true. Just because it says one thing doesn't mean that that's necessarily the case. Um, I guess I can't really go to negative two. Yeah, I can't really go to negative two. This would, be me, this would be me going to seven. Hold up. I don't want to block there. Step strike, left foot strike, right foot strike, turn. Nah, probably don't need to block there. Because if they okay, so if they kill my dancing drop. Because they could play like ice shard here in response, and then I go down to one, and then like another ice shard kills me. It's probably not that likely they're playing ice shards though. All right, we're gonna risk it. There we go. Good. Oh, Talia. You don't want to play Talia on the Sandswept Tomb? Then I don't get a Blossoming Blade. Oh, well worth. It's things I don't. I don't have room for all these landmarks. <laughs> That's why I, I probably should just block with the Green Glade because I don't have room. They've missed their beat. Gross. All right, they got 16 lives. That's a lot of lives. Keep your eyes on the horizon and your feet on the ground. My journey won't end until I'm through leaving. <laughs> Our attacks are going to be ridiculous. We're not very good at blocking, because these landmarks don't block. But our attacks are going to be ridiculous. So like this blade dance. More life heal. <laughs> so for one mana with a created card... We just get to attack with two five twos, the old one sand soldier, and two other one ones. Behold my work. So we could blade surge. Face my shield. And try to kill the Sunforger. Morning, take you. But that's not worth it. Alright, so they go to twenty. Because it's just, you know, like they play like a Pale Cascade or whatever then, and bust that up. That's it's too risky. Alright, so they're killing the Green Bay Duo. They're really scared of taking damage. Alright, so I could Dancing Droplet. But I'm not going to... 
because I want to have room next round so I can just lead with like Blossoming Blade, right? Like, I feel like if I play the Dancing Droplet, I just replace it anyway. Yeah, the Talia was stunned. And I did do the first Blade Surge, because, like I said, I was worried about, like, a Pill Cascade or something like that. It would kill. And so I wanted to hold on to have two. That's so silly. <laughs> We're still going to be able to Ribbon Dancer this round, also. So it takes a little bit of time to set up. But man, this is ridiculous. <laughs> our home, our ancestors are yeah, I could have really, a really a spell the Talia. That would have been pretty spicy too. Zoe Leeson. Yeah. So with this deck, you can, you can pretend like like what if they nerfed Azir into Oblivion but kept everything else the same? Well, then I guess you know you could have a deck like this. You could pretend like that. All right, let's get rid of those, and actually, let's let's mulligan we'll the Ribbon Dancer too. It's a good, you know, pay like these Blade Dance cards are good payoff, like in the late game. But you know, into an Eye of the Dragon, just playing a Ribbon Dancer doesn't really do very much. So cool, find some champions. Get some champions. Get some landmark. Get like some interaction. So that's the other like really good thing about the droplet, how like that attune mana is so important with the Aurelia. Those two together. Every blade, every beat in its place. <laughs> yeah, if Azir was just removed from the game. Hello. 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 Um sure. I wanna level up the Aurelia, right? And yeah, they're gonna heal their Nexus, but I mean they're at 19 anyway, so like it's not like they can go much higher. We'll get, get damage in on the Tasty Fate Folk. Follow my lead. So they'll probably go back to 20-ish. You spurn my gift. Yeah, back to 20. But that's fine, as we saw as we saw last game, we can do a ton of you know, like my opponent was at 20, like round six or whatever. We can do a ton of damage real fast, but we want to. I just want to get this really leveled up, so all those attacks are definitely worth it. Because we got halfway there that round by itself. Whoa, we're halfway there. I guess I just play Voice of the Risen, or do I like you know? Do I want to keep Deny available? A weapon heavy with history. Oh, should have kept Deny available. That would have been a really good card to deny. Yep. Yeah, I guess I guess passing now I don't have mana to like play Talia and Blade Dance and everything, do I? So I guess maybe playing the Voice of the Risen was incorrect, but I, we did get to take out that five two life steal, so like that's that's probably worth the four mana getting rid of that thing anyway. So maybe I'm just gonna go flawless duet, ribbon dancer, retreat all of that, and have to save Talia for next round. Cause otherwise Otherwise, I, you know, I'm just passing up on free value if I play the Talia. Good morning, Frank. Hope you're having a good one.
So this one we get the blade surge. I just don't understand the whole blade surge thing. Like, how do we get a blade surge on this one? Step strike, left foot strike, right foot strike, turn. So if I play this, do we get a blade surge? Blade surges are weird. Because I want to be able to have return mana. Maybe I don't have return mana. Do we get a blade surge from this? I hope so. If we get the blade surge with this thing attacking, why not with this one? Yay, we do. Okay, good. So the dancing droplet has not attacked. It's not stunned. It has not attacked. Alright, there we go. And that's why I want to do that, get that blade surge. Our home, our ancestors are safe GG's. once more. What's up, Drake? Welcome to the stream. Alright, we got uh discard burn, super aggro. Probably not gonna give me time to set up and do all my cool stuff. So I don't like this matchup. Don't really have anything to keep in our hand either, so let's mulligan. Ribbon Dancer, I guess, is keepable, but it's not great. Yeah, two mana, two one. We can do better. Dancing Droplet. I needed you last round. Okay, because. Because when Aurelia was on the bench, the landmark was to the left of her. If she was attacking, she'd be considered left of the landmark. Because they would check the bench last. Okay. Good to know. So it's all about the whole left to right thing. Obviously, I want to kill the Arena Battlecaster. And I think the only way to do that is to not get very much value this round. Because, like, if I just play a blocker, they're going to flame chompers and, and kill my blocker with the flame chompers. Take a real close look at the action. So this is a play effect. We don't get to play dance. So I get a burst speed, put something in here to block. I think that's, like, my, my one play to, like, block this battlecaster. Uh, let's see. So next round we're gonna have one, two, three. So I'm figuring out which two drop we want to play. Next round we're gonna have four mana. I guess I could have just played a really uh, than the four. No, I couldn't have. All right, so we're gonna play the duo. Hey, Krabby. That's my resting face. Cool. It's Draven time. I dance not to forget, but to remember. See, we're gonna outrace with the Green Glade duo. Let's move. If I attack with Aurelia, it does enable Whirling Death. Right now, they're just like taking the eight. It does force them to have Whirling Death, but you know, like, they could like Whirling Death the Green Glade duo. Then again, they can always just have Whirling Death. Like, if they have Whirling Death, they can Flame Chomper's Challenge and then Whirling Death and kill stuff anyway, so... I think mine as well. We get an extra attack towards leveling up Aurelia. Yeah, they have Whirling Death. No? Yeah, okay, so they'll Whirling Death with that thing. Which... If they're blocking here, that means they're Whirling Death the Green Glade duo. If they'd block there, they'd Whirling Death and kill the Aurelia. I guess if I do wait till for them having the next round, I guess I would have the homecoming. Okay, so... Yeah, that's true. I would have the homecoming for protection. Alright, probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have attacked with the Aurelia, because of the homecoming. 
All right, so made a good retreat return play, bad into obvious whirling death play. Coming right up. Time for the money makers. Obviously, you'd rather bounce the droplet, but wait, this thing's only doing one damage? I guess I could bounce droplet and just let that do one damage. Maybe they're trying to bait me into doing this and then they whirling death the flame chompers or buff up the flame chompers again? Okay, yeah, they're. Wait, did they just get excited my Aurelia? Yeah, I guess so. Does... Would that have stopped the homecoming if they would have just killed my droplet? Would that have stopped my homecoming? I don't, I don't know what's going on. Alright, six. So next round we have six mana. What am I doing with six mana? Am I doing sparring student blade? And so we go this, this round. The party has arrived. Yeah, discard, discard aggro is a difficult deck to play. Yeah, so would have stopped homecoming. So yeah, I think the... I mean, it really is obviously a champion, a very good champion, but they could have stomped. Could have stopped my homecoming. I don't draw the card. They don't. Uh, their Draven hits me and levels up and everything. Just hanging out. Playing some Legends of Runeterra. What you doing, Draven? Killing some Sand Soldiers. Wouldn't just like switching those two make sense? Got an axe with your name on it. You know, like have the one one. Yeah, like just switching those two would have made a lot of sense because then my blossom blade would have just been dead. Yeah, opponent's probably a newer player. We're a normal. Hopefully they're learning though. Hopefully like they've they've hopefully they're realizing a couple of these mistakes. Like I think whenever they challenged my Aurelia and only buffed up their challenger to be a one two i think they definitely should use the two like use the spinning axe there and make it two power anyway we got captive coming in with the sub thank you so much there captive bring in the hype for 11 months now almost a year with that continued support thank you captive yeah they're trying yep so that's good they're trying it's all about you know especially when you're a newer player it's all about getting better so hopefully they're learning and, and see, you know seeing these interactions and everything and, and things like that. Talia! So Had to do that for the end of the game. And round. Why did this only go to a 2-2? Oh, the visual bug. Yeah, because it's definitely a 3-3. So it's technically better to just lead and follow the Dancing Droplet first and then Flawless Duet first. My, I think my opponent's disconnected, so I just attacked. <laughs> Roping when you lose the core part of playing Acro. Glad to see him practicing that. Also. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Yeah, the Talia buff was huge. That's what I was kind of saying at the time, is that there's a huge difference between a 3-5 and a 2-4. Big, big difference there. That was a, a really good buff. We got a brand new Twitch Prime sub uh, from Void Snakes. Got to get some hype boats in the chat. Thanks, Captive. Getting those hype boats in there. All right, we got Talia and Sandswept Tomb. We're playing against Azir. I think I just mulliganed that. Like, we need some early games, right? Like, you can't just keep five drops if we don't have anything to play earlier. This looks like a better hand. And they get to draw two at the beginning of the game. And they found the Fairy Sun Disc. Lucky. So I could definitely attack for one if I would have just attacked immediately. 
Now they can play whatever blocker and I don't get to attack. Oh, I like it. They're, they're going, you know, turbo sun disc. That's really cool. I like it. Thanks, Void Snakes. So it's finally checking out the stream after watching a lot of the YouTube videos. Well, very happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome. I guess this is a good time to retreat return. Because if I just play Aurelia, they still kill my sparring student. Yeah, five mana champions should probably be able to block, you know, your 3-2 Fearsome Spider, right? <laughs> so, being able to block Fearsome is definitely really important. Alright, so they got a lot of blockers. They're going wide. It's good for their Azir. So that's only seven out of twelve for Aurelia. Keep your distance. Hey, yeah, Heimer is a five drop that can't block Fearsome, but Heimer creates turrets that can block Fearsome. I think it makes sense for Heimer to be the size that Heimer is because of being able to generate all the turrets and everything. Lead and follow. I want to take seven? I kind of want to just take seven. A weapon heavy with history. Taking damage is like this a sign of power, right? If you're just like willing just to take seven damage, you don't, you don't mind. That's a sign of, of power. Soothsayer. That card's a great blocker. Roiling Sands with Spell Shield. Busted. <laughs> How could we ever compete with Roiling Sands Spell Shield? I guess I should maybe lead and follow to start with. And, like, put the Barring Student back. I don't know. Not in my city. I kind of need to put one of these Barring Students back in my hand with lead and follow. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, Voice of the Risen stacks. Yep. Speaker, you've joined us in dangerous times. This too is a story we must remember. Sorry, sparring student. Why not do it after attack? That's a good question. Mm. We've seen greatness. Now we will achieve it. You disrupt our peace. And we just look like a really Azir this game. Yeah, good thing they nerfed Inspiring Marshall to be 4 mana instead of 5. So we could play Inspiring Marshall twice here. Alright, we are 4 and 0 oh with Aurelia Talia. Our home, our ancestors are safe once more. All right, well, even though it's meme tier day and we're playing in normal, our deck is 4 and 0. Oh, so y'all know what that means. That means that we're going to be heading on over to ranked for match number 5. Anytime we go 4-0 oh with the meme tier deck to try to finish out the 5-0, oh, we go take it on over to ranked. See if it's good enough uh, for ranked as well. Ooh, overwhelmed. They're going to be attacking pretty hard. This is going to be a race. I like our hand a lot, honestly. Maybe we don't need the second droplet. 
but I love the homecoming with the drop, like especially this kind of matchup that they have, like the big overwhelm stuff, like they um, battle fury. As long as it's not on a uh, Yuna with spell shield, you know, like they, you know, battle fury, like a Sejuani or a Nectan or anything like that, homecoming can be really nice. Okay, we got the Talia. We can copy the Emperor's Dias. Certainly glad we have the attack token round one, round three, round five. We've had the attack token round one quite a bit in these games, and that's that's really nice for playing like in a really attack. Lead and follow. I don't want to pass also. No, maybe just play this Ribbon Dancer. Yeah, go for it. Ugh. Should have passed. Ice Shard. I've been getting blown out by Ice Shard from this deck quite a bit recently. Okay, so we'll have Homecoming Mana this round. Yeah, Ice Shard and Overwhelm, and I, and I forget about it quite a bit. But yeah, it's in there. Violence, chaos, and destruction. Great eye shard right there. Great eye shard right there. So this is the butcher of the sands. Very, very good hand opponent. If you have if you have to say like what's like the ideal hand, I think my opponent figured out what the ideal hand is. Alright, so I do okay, so I'm good I have to cast homecoming, but like like Omen Hawk and multiple eye shards. And then Renekton, Sivir, Wildclaw. Like that's this is the ideal hand. Uh, so if I go Blossoming Blade, we attack with three one ones and a five two, and then I Homecoming or Talia and just get another one of these Sandswept Tombs and play first, and then Homecoming. Keep your eyes on the horizon and your feet on the ground. Yeah, I think it's Talia. It's a living. Be really nice if this Blossoming Blade was four mana for next round for Aurelia and Blossoming Blade both, but I guess I won't have any spell mana anyway. Excuse me. Hey, Len Green. Oh, that's a good call. Kordak had the line that I didn't think about. I forget. I forget that Homecoming. Because I don't play that much Homecoming landmark stuff. Homecoming can bounce the landmark. So really what I should have done is had I should have had Talia block the Renekton and then bounce the two mana landmark and, and Wild Claw. And we would have taken we would have taken two extra damage from the Sivir, but then the Renekton would have been dead and Talia would have still been in play. Stands beneath me and wins behind me. Alright, I need to attack to for the Roiling Sands. Can't play any of these and get them roiling sands. You're a nine out of twelve. I must become the leader they need. Oh, I don't have the attack token anymore. I need to play more of this deck. <laughs> I don't I don't play really as here very much, as you can tell. <laughs> I've, I've basically have like played the deck like one or two times ever. They've missed their beat.
Okay. Well. Your rhythm's off. So like this play gets blown out by Ice Shard. They've already played two Ice Shards though. So do, does that mean, like do I have to do Aurelia? Hurry, they await our signal. All right, good call. Let's, let's recall Landmark. Good call, let's do that. I like recall Landmark. That seems safe. Safer. And now here comes the five twos. And we won. GG's. Sandswept two. Getting it done. All right, made a couple of mistakes there. But our deck's too powerful. Talia is just too good to lose. Everybody knows that. Talia just doesn't really ever lose. So five and oh, including winning over in ranked. So the Talia buff was good. Sandstone Tomb with Talia was really cool. Just getting Sandstone Chargers was pretty awesome. Um, Voice of the Risen did its thing. Homecoming was absolutely amazing. I can't believe we only have two Homecoming in the deck. Oh, we top decked Homecoming that last round whenever we absolutely needed it. But yeah, Homecoming was really good, like all those games. I think that we should probably be having a third Homecoming in here. Deny doesn't seem that necessary. I, I think that that's, that should just be three Homecoming. <laughs> homecoming was incredible. Just Just do that. Uh, moving forward, but besides that uh, Everything else looked pretty good. So there we go. So there's another a way to play Aurelia So this is just kind of pretending like if you pretend that Azir was just like nerfed into the ground and wasn't and you couldn't play it anymore You'd be able to play Talia but Yeah, if, you, if you're somebody who likes playing Aurelia Azir and maybe you want to switch it up Maybe you want to do something different, you know, maybe you know give this one a try if, or if you wanted to look for a, You know a deck that you can play Talia in um, yeah, go ahead and give this a try. I was I was definitely impressed with new a real like it really looked really good like with the blade surges right like being able to create the blade surges when it does now. It really was really buffed up with that that uh, quote unquote bug fix that allows it to create that uh, blade surge like the when when the allies attack. I still think that's kind of weird, right? Because it feels like you need to have an Aurelia leveled up first, and then then when allies attack, you create it. I still, I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I feel like it, I feel like how it was before was the way it's supposed to be, but whatever. All right, but there we go. There's our first deck of the day, another 5-0. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of New Talia or the Aurelia with the Blade Surges or, you know, just anything else. Hopefully y'all enjoyed the deck. But that's going to be it here for Aurelia Talia. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.